And one of the reasons why some uh, television stations won't have me on them is because of my stand on oil and salt. Because the medical message is, if you want to conquer blood pressure, what do you got to do? Stop the oil and the salt. But there's oils and there's oils, as we saw yesterday, and there's salts and there's salts. High blood pressure can be caused by dehydration. In dehydration, little capillary networks shut down to try and conserve full blood volume. That builds up pressure. High blood pressure can be caused by no salt. High blood pressure can be caused by table salt. High blood pressure can be caused by no greens. No greens, no magnesium, water can't get in. High blood pressure can be caused by no sun. No sun, no vitamin D, minerals can't get in. High blood pressure can be caused because of inactivity. When you exercise, you get the circulation of the blood out of the internal organs or areas of the body and out to the extremity, which takes pressure off the heart. And what's the definition of insanity? To do what you've always done and expect different results. We all eat different kinds of food every day, but did you know the hidden dangers some of them can carry? Could your daily meals be harmful to your heart? But if so, which seemingly harmless foods are the culprits? Today, Barbara O'Neill will reveal these common foods silently raising your blood pressure. We're diving into dietary pitfalls that could be compromising your health. These silent offenders are often hidden in plain sight, but with the right knowledge, you can take control of your health. Stay tuned to uncover the changes you need to make to protect your heart and improve your well-being. The sodium trap in processed foods. Have you ever thought if your favorite snack is secretly loaded with salt? Think about those chips you can't resist during movie night or the canned soup you grab on a busy day. Most of us don't stop to consider how much sodium is packed into these convenient foods. Barbara emphasizes the importance of understanding what's on your plate, literally. Sodium, while essential in small amounts, becomes harmful when consumed in excess, as it leads to water retention and high blood pressure. Unfortunately, the convenience of processed foods often masks their health risks, putting us in, into a false sense of security. I think the Celtic, they say 82, the Baja salt, they claim 84. There's three magnesiums, and that magnesium, when you put that salt on your tongue, the mucous membranes in the mouth absorb the magnesiums, take it to your cell membrane, and then you drink the water. That magnesium pulls the water inside the cell. There's no need to mix the salt in the water. We should be drinking pure water. And if you put it in the water, it's just dissolved into the water. But if you put it in your mouth, the mucous membranes take those minerals straight to the cell, you drink your water, and you pull the water inside the cell. How does salt weight raise the blood pressure? There's one salt that will raise blood pressure, and that's sodium chloride. That's the harsh industrial salt. We need the whole salt. Barbara explains that excessive sodium disrupts the delicate balance of electrolytes in your body. This imbalance can strain your kidneys, which work tirelessly to filter excess salt from your bloodstream. Over time, the strain can lead to kidney damage and high blood pressure, creating an unending cycle. Barbara urges everyone to read labels carefully and stay within the recommended daily sodium intake of 2,300 milligram, or even lower for those with existing health conditions. But when someone's not eating enough fruits and vegetables, and that's where you get most of your potassium, and they're putting table salt on everything far too much, what happens now is sodium levels rise and potassium levels drop. There is a small amount of sodium in the cell, but when this happens, you see osmosis and diffusion happens when the highest concentration merges into the lowest. So now sodium levels inside the cell are rising, which they should not, and the cell swells. What's that called? High blood pressure. The doctor is right. Table salt will, will contribute to high blood pressure. Excess sodium consumption also impacts your cardiovascular system and can lead to endothelial dysfunction. The endothelium is the inner lining of your blood vessels, responsible for regulating blood flow and pressure. When exposed to high levels of sodium, the endothelium's ability to relax and contract is reduced, causing a compounding effect that raises blood pressure. 
Barbara also points out that this dysfunction can lead to a loss of elasticity in the blood vessels, increasing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. To combat this, she advises incorporating foods rich in nitrates, like beets and arugula, which support endothelial health and improve circulation. Hydration is another overlooked but essential factor. Drinking enough water helps flush out excess sodium, restoring balance in the bloodstream. What's particularly troubling is how sodium sneaks into unexpected places. Foods like bread, sauces, and even seemingly healthy options like cottage cheese can have significant amounts of sodium. Barbara's advice is simple. Cook at home whenever possible and season your meals with herbs and spices rather than salt. These natural alternatives not only enhance flavor, but also provide additional health benefits. To mitigate the effects of high sodium intake, Barbara recommends increasing your consumption of potassium-rich foods like bananas, spinach, and sweet potatoes. Potassium helps decrease the effects of sodium by promoting the excretion of excess salt through urine. This natural balance is vital for maintaining healthy blood pressure and overall cardiovascular health. Pairing high potassium foods with adequate hydration creates a powerful combination that protects your blood vessels and keeps your blood pressure stable. Barbara also highlights the cultural differences in sodium consumption, noting that traditional diets in some parts of the world rely more on fresh, whole ingredients and less on processed foods. Countries like Japan, despite their use of high sodium soy sauce, balance their diets with potassium-rich foods like seaweed and vegetables. By observing and learning from these dietary patterns, you can find creative ways to reduce sodium intake without sacrificing flavor. For example, fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut, when prepared at home, offer a good alternative to salty snacks and provide gut health benefits that indirectly support cardiovascular health. Making these small but impactful swaps can lead to long-term improvements in your blood pressure and overall well-being. Hidden sugars in everyday items. Many healthy foods nowadays are contributing to hypertension. Products marketed as diet-friendly are laden with hidden sugars to enhance their taste. You might think sugar is only an issue in desserts, but Barbara warns us that it's sneaking into places you'd never expect. Flavored yogurts, granola bars, and even those so-called low-fat products are often loaded with added sugars. They might look healthy on the outside, but inside, they're setting you up for trouble. It's been misunderstood. Calcium's the king because when it gets in, all the other minerals piggyback on the back. And I've got some news for you. You might find it shocking news. Bones aren't made of calcium. Bones are made of 12 trace minerals and 64 minor minerals. What's the connection between sugar and blood pressure? When you eat too much sugar, your body produces more insulin, which makes your kidneys hold on to sodium. And remember what we just learned about sodium, it makes your blood pressure climb. Add to that the weight gain sugar causes, and you've got double trouble. Extra weight puts more pressure on your arteries, making it even harder for your heart to do its job. Barbara also points out the psychological aspect of sugar consumption. Sugar creates a dopamine response in the brain, giving you a temporary feeling of pleasure or reward. This cycle can quickly become addictive, causing cravings that make it difficult to break free from sugar-heavy diets. The problem isn't just about calories. It's about the hormonal disruption caused by constant insulin rises. These disruptions can lead to leptin resistance, a condition where your brain no longer receives signals that you're full, leading to overeating. Barbara advises combating sugar addiction by introducing foods that stabilize blood sugar levels, such as cinnamon, chia seeds, and oats. These foods provide sustained energy and help reduce the intensity of cravings. Replacing sugar-laden products with whole foods is a game changer. Fresh fruits, for instance, provide natural sweetness along with fiber, vitamins, and minerals. These nutrients support overall health and help stabilize blood sugar levels. Barbara also recommends incorporating healthy fats, such as those found in avocados and nuts, which can reduce cravings for sugary snacks. There's no need to take refined sugar because We've got maple syrup, we've got honey. I think I heard Emma talk about a few sweeteners. There's so many sweeteners that there's no need to go to the refined sugar. Don't forget to drink plenty of water. Sometimes, what feels like a sugar craving is just your body crying out for hydration. Staying hydrated not only helps balance your blood pressure, but also makes you feel more alert and less snacky. It's a win-win for your health and your mood. So very important, number two, that you be well hydrated, water. 
The water loss in a day is about two and a half litres. That's 1.5 litres out through the kidneys, uh, 0.5 of a litre out of the skin, 0.3 of a litre out of the colon, and 0.2 of a litre out of your lungs. That's two and a half litres a day. So two litres must be replaced. The other half a litre can come through herb teas, maybe a juice, maybe your salad, maybe your fruit salad. You're getting some moisture there. Often, sugar doesn't just impact your waistline. It also messes with your gut, which is more important to your blood pressure than you might think. When you eat too much sugar, it feeds the harmful bacteria in your gut while kicking out the good ones. This imbalance can cause inflammation, not just in your digestive system, but all over your body, including your blood vessels. Barbara recommends adding probiotic-rich foods like yogurt, kefir, and fermented veggies to your meals. These foods help bring your gut back into balance, calming inflammation, and indirectly supporting healthier blood pressure. By tackling sugar's effects on both your gut and your overall health, you're setting yourself up for a stronger heart and a happier, healthier you. The Caffeine Connection Could your morning coffee be spiking your blood pressure? For most of us, caffeine is a non-negotiable part of the day. Whether it's a cup of coffee to kickstart the morning or an energy drink for a mid-afternoon slump, but Barbara reminds us that caffeine doesn't just wake you up. It also wakes up your blood vessels, and not in a good way. But in the book Caffeine Blues, Kachansky has a chapter called Coming Off the Bean. And he says, if you have three cups of coffee a day, start having three cups of coffee, but instead of a one teaspoon of coffee, you put half a teaspoon of coffee and half a teaspoon of something like Roma or Cafex. It won't taste any different, and your body will still be getting that little bit of caffeine. And every day, a little less coffee, a little more Roma or Cafex. And within a week, you can be off the coffee without any pain or suffering. As she explains, the more addicted you are to it, the harder it gets to eliminate it from your diet. Caffeine works by giving your nervous system a jolt which temporarily tightens your blood vessels and makes your heart pump faster. While this isn't a problem for everyone, if you're sensitive to caffeine or drink too much of it, those temporary rises can start adding up. And it's not just coffee to watch out for. Energy drinks, sodas, and even some teas can pack a surprising punch of caffeine. Because the sources of caffeine in our diets extend beyond coffee, the impact of caffeine on blood pressure varies from person to person influenced by factors like genetics, tolerance, and existing health conditions. But Barbara advises monitoring your response to caffeine and moderating intake to avoid potential risks. Barbara's solution for caffeine-related blood pressure issues is straightforward, balance and timing. Limit your intake to two or three cups of coffee a day and avoid consuming caffeine late in the afternoon, as it can interfere with sleep quality. Poor sleep, in turn, increases hypertension creating a cycle that's hard to break. So, in her opinion, herbal teas and decaffeinated beverages offer satisfying alternatives without the risks associated with caffeine. Caffeine, called Australia's darling, I think it's America's darling too. It is also a big leecher of minerals, especially the calcium and magnesium. Barbara sheds light on something many overlook, the impact of caffeine on your adrenal glands. When you rely on caffeine too much, it can overstimulate these glands, causing them to pump out extra cortisol, the stress hormone. High cortisol doesn't just make you feel on edge. It raises your blood pressure and throws off your body's balance, including your sleep and digestion. It's a cycle. Poor sleep increases stress, which then pushes your blood pressure even higher. To break this loop, Barbara suggests adding adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha and holy basil to your routine. These natural remedies can help your body handle stress better and bring your cortisol levels back to normal. Paired with mindful caffeine habits, they're a great way to keep your adrenal system healthy and your blood pressure in check. To further minimize caffeine's impact, Barbara suggests pairing your morning coffee with foods rich in magnesium, such as leafy greens and almonds. Magnesium helps relax blood vessels and counters the effects of caffeine. By making informed choices, you can enjoy your caffeine fix without compromising your cardiovascular health. Alcohol's double-edged sword. Those evening glasses of wine are also doing more harm than good. Alcohol, often consumed in social settings or as a stress reliever, carries a complex relationship with blood pressure. A drink or two might feel like a harmless way to relax, but Barbara wants us to know the full story. While moderate alcohol can have some benefits, like improving circulation, too much can lead to hypertension. 
And here's the kicker. Even if you're drinking within limits, alcohol can still cause dehydration, which puts extra strain on your heart. Alcohol is bad news on the heart and tobacco. They must stop if you want heart health, keeping the heart with all diligence. Think of your blood like a river. When you're dehydrated, the river runs low and your body responds by holding onto sodium to conserve water. This makes your blood thicker, forcing your heart to work harder to pump it. Over time, this added stress can cause your blood pressure to rise. Barbara emphasizes that moderation isn't just a suggestion, it's a necessity if you want to protect your heart. Maybe in about 5% of people, the blood was like this. It was all clumped together. And I'd say to the person, have you had any water to drink today? Ah, uh, no. I didn't drink water because I was traveling and I didn't want to have to keep stopping. I said, I can't read your blood because it's all clumped together. So what's the sweet spot? For most people, it's one drink a day for women and two for men. But if you're already dealing with high blood pressure, cutting alcohol out completely might be the smarter choice. The good news is there are plenty of fun, alcohol-free alternatives. To counter the potential damage caused by alcohol, Barbara recommends adopting a diet rich in antioxidants. Foods like berries, dark chocolate, and green tea help neutralize free radicals generated by alcohol metabolism, reducing stress and inflammation. This proactive approach ensures that your body remains resilient against the harmful effects of occasional indulgences. The role of trans fats. Let's talk about trans fats, the bad guys hiding in plain sight. Found in fried foods, baked goods, and margarine, trans fats do more than just add flavor. They create serious trouble for your heart and arteries. Once you consume them, these harmful fats kickstart chronic inflammation in your blood vessels. This inflammation encourages plaque deposits to form and grow, which narrows your arteries and makes it harder for your blood to flow smoothly. The result? A ticking time bomb for high blood pressure and other cardiovascular issues. So what are the dangerous fats? The dangerous fats would be the altered fats. The other dangerous fat is the huge amount of fat that's dumped in the body from the high carbohydrate, high sugar diet, which we also looked at when we looked at the, at the liver. Barbara emphasizes that even small amounts of trans fats can have cumulative effects, compounding the risk of hypertension over time. She advises avoiding foods that list partially hydrogenated oils on their ingredient labels, as this term often signals the presence of trans fats. Margarine is a very common example. One of the most dangerous altered fats is the, is the margarine. Margarine was introduced in the 1980s to help prevent heart disease, has it? No. It's made no difference at all. People often use it, but fortunately, there are healthier alternatives. Barbara suggests going for foods made with unsaturated fats, such as olive oil, avocado oil, or coconut oil. She calls them good fats, and these fats not only provide energy, but also promote heart health by reducing inflammation and improving cholesterol levels. Because remember, we looked at that, it's not the fat. <laughs> the fat's not the problem. Adding nuts, seeds, and fatty fish into your diet can further enhance your intake of beneficial fats, offering protection against arterial damage. Beyond dietary changes, Barbara stresses the importance of lifestyle modifications. Regular physical activity, for instance, can help counter the effects of trans fats by improving circulation and reducing blood pressure. Combining a balanced diet with an active lifestyle creates a powerful defense against the risks associated with these harmful fats, ensuring long-term cardiovascular health. Processed meats and preservatives. Could your sandwich also be a health risk? Processed meats like bacon, sausages, and deli slices might save you time in the kitchen, but Barbara warns they come with serious downsides. These meats are often loaded with sodium and preservatives like nitrites and nitrates, which can cause trouble for your blood pressure. Once inside your body, these preservatives can form harmful compounds that damage your arteries, increasing your risk of hypertension and other heart issues. Basically, they are all inflammation of the lining of the small and sometimes it can be the large intestine. So the different, different names imply different irritations in different parts, but you know, the same thing cures them all. The link between processed meats and hypertension lies in their sodium content. A single serving of bacon or ham can exceed your recommended daily sodium intake, setting the stage for water retention and increased blood pressure. And the effects don't stop there. 
High sodium levels force your body to hold onto water, which raises your blood volume and, with it, your blood pressure. Barbara stresses that even small daily servings of these meats can add up over time, quietly putting your cardiovascular system under strain. For those looking to reduce their reliance on processed meats, Barbara recommends exploring fresh, unprocessed protein sources like poultry, fish, and legumes, and preparing food at home. These alternatives not only provide essential nutrients, but also eliminate the risks associated with sodium and preservatives. Your ketogenic diet cookbooks will be nearly all meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what's important to explore is the many different ways to do your legumes. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned that my first cookbook was an Indian vegetarian cookbook. They know how to do legumes. Mm -hmm. So many different ways, so many different flavors. Barbara also advises adding plant-based protein options to your diet. Foods like lentils, chickpeas, and tofu offer a nutrient-dense alternative to processed meats, promoting better blood pressure control. These options are versatile and can be used in a variety of recipes, making it easy to transition to a heart-healthy diet without sacrificing flavor or convenience. Not everyone heard that voice. Who heard that voice? The hearts that are open. And that's the gift God has given us, is the gift of choice. So after he'd been in the desert for 40 days, Jesus came to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Artificial sweeteners, a hidden danger. Marketed as a healthier alternative to sugar, these substitutes often promise zero calories and guilt-free sweetness. But according to Barbara, the reality isn't so simple. Some studies suggest that artificial sweeteners can disrupt your body's natural ability to process sugar, leading to metabolic changes that affect blood pressure regulation. We've got maple syrup, we've got honey. I think I heard Emma talk about a few sweeteners. There's One of the biggest concerns with artificial sweeteners is their impact on your gut. Your gut microbiome plays a key role in maintaining overall health, including blood pressure control. Artificial sweeteners can throw off the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, sparking inflammation that doesn't just stay in your digestive system, it spreads to your blood vessels. This systemic inflammation can contribute to hypertension, making artificial sweeteners far from the safe choice they appear to be. So, what's the alternative? Barbara suggests swapping artificial sweeteners for natural options like honey, stevia, or monk fruit. These sweeteners don't come with the same risks and can be used in moderation to satisfy your sweet tooth without putting your health on the line. She also recommends slowly cutting back on sweeteners altogether, retraining your palate to enjoy the natural flavors of whole foods. Barbara also highlights the importance of staying informed about the products you consume. Reading labels and understanding the ingredients in your food can help you make better health choices. By avoiding artificial sweeteners and embracing a diet rich in natural, unprocessed foods, you can protect your cardiovascular system and maintain healthy blood pressure levels. Now that you're aware of these hidden dietary dangers, which changes will you make to protect your heart? Your health is in your hands, and the small adjustments you make today can have a profound impact on your future. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into maintaining optimal health. Together, we can uncover the path to better living and a healthier heart. Stay tuned for more life-changing advice from Barbara O'Neill.